Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're going to be talking about box and whisker plots. So, on my last video, I called it a box plot. It could also be called a box and whiskers. It's just, you know, um, it's got some different names. But at any rate, they all mean the same thing. And in this specific video, we're not talking about outliers, okay? In my next video, we will be talking about outliers, but I just want us to get used to box and whisker plots first before we start worrying about outliers, okay? Don't be scared of outliers. I think they're kind of interesting, but um, just so you know, we're not covering that in this video. So, um, a box and whisker plot, as I mentioned in the last video, it's good for kind of a whole big picture of data. It's not going to show you individual data points, but it's going to show you really like the spread of data and um, kind of a big picture view. So in your box and whisker plot, it's made up of five points. Okay, so you've got your minimum point, your Q1 point, your Q2 point, which is also known as your median that's the median, so when we talked in the last video about finding median, that's your Q2. Your Q1, or excuse me, your Q3, and your maximum. So that's one, two, three, four, five points that make up your box and whisker plot. Now, it's important to know, and this is kind of a weird concept to think about, but from here, from the minimum to the Q1, this is 25% of your data. From the Q1 to the Q2, this is 25% of your data. From Q2 to Q3, this is 25%, and from Q3 to your max, that's 25%. So I know it, students say, well, how can that be 25% and that also be 25%? This one's clearly way bigger than that one. But it's not about the size, it's about the distribution of data. So what this tells me looking at this is if this is 25% of my data and it's all tightly packed in here, that means that I have a lot of data that falls within that range. Versus over here, this one's also 25%, but it's really stretched out. So that tells me there's not as much data over here, okay? Um, let's see, we need to know about our five number summary. That is these five things, your minimum, your, your min, right, your Q1, your Q2, your Q3, and your maximum. That makes up your five number summary. You have to have this to create the box and whisker plot. So let's run through what each of these things are. Your minimum, that's your lowest data point. So whatever is the lowest number in your data set, that's your minimum. Your Q1 would be your median. So remember, median means middle. So it's your median of lower quartile. Okay, we'll get into what, you know, basically this the lower half of your data. This will make a lot more sense when you see it in action. Your Q2 is your median, so your middle, of all the data. Your Q3 is your median or middle of the upper half of data. We call that the upper quartile. And your maximum is the highest data point. Now as a side note, you also have your inner quartile range. And we sum that up by saying IQR. Okay, you can find your inner quartile range by taking your Q3 value and subtracting your Q1 value. That will tell you your IQR. It's not going to come into play as much with, in this video as it is in my next video when we talk about outliers, but we need to go ahead and get in the habit of finding IQR. So let's put this in action. I've been given a data set right here, and it wants me to plot, find my five number summary, right? One, two, three, four, five. My five number summary, and also plot a box and whiskers plot. So first thing that I need to do, the best place to start is your minimum. Um, now, in order to find your minimum, you have to make sure your data set is in order. And we talked about that in the last video. And if it's out of order, you got to put it in order. And I even showed a nice little trick of how you can make the calculator do it for you. So um, if you're in a situation where you're needing to put a lot of numbers in order, check out my last video. Um, it was right at the end that we talked about it. Okay, so my minimum value is my lowest data point. 
So in this case, I'm going to use another color. In this case, it would be 24. Okay, and I like to circle it. So my minimum value is 24. Let's look at the maximum now. That's my next easiest one to fill in. So the maximum will be the highest point in the data set. So that would be 36. And let's circle it. All right, my next easiest one to find would be my Q2. So I know it feels weird jumping straight to the middle, but remember that Q2 is your median of all your data. So we want to find that first before we start splitting the data up into quartiles. So I, I'm, I mentioned in the last video to find median of a whole list of data. I'm, I like just covering up and then moving inward. There's different strategies that work for different people. I see my Q2 um, value, my center value is 30. Now, my Q1, this is the median of the lower quartile, or if you want to think about it, like the lower half of data. So if we said that Q2 was 30, then from here to the minimum, right, so from 28 to the minimum, that's my lower half of data. I do not include that 30, okay? Now, just so you know, there will be a time when you might not have a perfect middle, okay, and you might have two that are in the middle. And that would happen if you had an even number of data points. Right here we have an odd number, so it worked out pretty well. But if you have an even number, you might end up with two in the middle. If that were to happen, okay, you would find the average. So let's say that these, you know, I don't know. Let's say that these two points, I'm going to cover up everything else, ended up being in the middle, okay? And I had to say, all right, well, I need to find the average of those two points to really find the true middle. So if that was the case, I would add these two up, 27 plus 28, um, and then I would divide by 2, since there are two numbers. So it would end up being 27.5, okay? If that was the case, then the 20, I would write it up here and I would circle it as my, as my middle point, okay, my, my Q2. If that were to happen, then I could count 27 as my starting point of my lower data, okay? Um, and I could count 28 as the starting point for the upper half of data. But when you have something that is very clearly in the middle and I didn't have to find the average, I can't reuse that 30, okay? So I hope that made sense. I felt like that was a little complicated, um, but I hope that made sense. You can't reuse the 30 that I've circled, okay? I can't reuse that Q2, but I can reuse my minimum and maximum. I will use those to help me find um, my Q1. So kind of a double standard there, like, well, you can't use that circle, but you can use that one. Yeah, it just, that's how it is. Okay, so I'm done with the 30. This is my lower half of data. So I need to now find the middle here. So it might help just to cover with the fingers, and I see that I have a double middle. So I'm going to have to find the average of those two points. So 26 plus 27, let me see, that would be... 53 and then divided by 2 since I have two points it would be 26.5 okay that's going to be my Q1 all right now I need to find my Q3 so the same thing just instead of talking about the lower half of data now we're talking about the upper half of data I've circled 30 so that's done okay I'm just going to use from 31 on to 36 and I want to find the middle value. And I see I have a double middle there, so I'm going to have to find the average again. The average between 33 and 35, add them up, divide by 2, it ends up being 34. All right, so I now have my five number summary and I'm able to go ahead and start plotting this. So 
Um, start with just your minimum. I went ahead and created a number line that worked for this data set. You will have to create your own number line that works for the numbers that you've been given. So just try to space them out well, not too far, not too close. Okay, so plot each point. My minimum's at 24. That'd be right there. Q1 is at 26.5. Eh, that'd be approximately right here. It's just an estimation. 30 um, would be my Q2, 34 would be my Q3, and 36 would be my maximum. So the way I create this is I do um, with my two outermost points, I make whiskers, and then with those three inner points, I build a box. Hence, box and whisker plot. And there we go, there's my box and whiskers. This is 25% of my data, 25%, 25%, and 25%. Now, let's go ahead and get in the habit of finding the IQR. Now, to find my IQR, I would need to take my Q3 and subtract my Q1. So I would do 34 minus 26.5, and that would be 7.5 in this case, okay? So in my next video, we're going to talk about how I would do a box and whisker plot with outliers. So if that's what you're looking for, check out the next video. But this has been Miss Miss Math Tutorials.